According to three of the canonical Gospels a woven crown of thorns was placed on the head of Jesus during the events leading up to the crucifixion of Jesus. It was one of the instruments of the Passion, employed by Jesus or captors both to cause him pain and to mock his claim of authority. It is mentioned in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and John and is often alluded to by the early Church Fathers, such as Clement of Alexandria, Oregon, and others. In later centuries, relics believed by many to be all or part of the crown of thorns have been venerated. Christian Symbolism Christian writers associated thorns with the fall of man, following God's pronouncement to Adam that, thorns also and thistles shall, the ground, bring forth to thee. They have also seen a shadow of Abraham's sacrifice of Isaac which was averted by the appearance of a ram caught by its horns in the thicket, i.e., with thorns around its head. Like Jesus, the ram subsequently became a substitutionary sacrifice. Cultural Context Plutarch makes reference in his advice to married couples, to a custom in which they crown the bride with a wreath of thorny acanthus. Apparently, the prickly plant is also fragrant and the custom symbolizes the need for the groom to be patient with his bride. The likeliest intent of the Roman soldiers was a cruel parody of the civic crown worn by the emperor. This crown was a military decoration presented by soldiers to those who had saved the lives of Roman citizens, and had become imperial regalia since Augustus, who in his time was hailed as savior of the world. The irony in this symbolism will not be lost to the Christian, as a relic. Jerusalem A few writers of the first six centuries AD speak of a relic known to be still in existence and venerated by the faithful. Saint Paulinus of Nola, writing after 409, refers to the thorns with which our Saviour was crowned as relics held in honour along with the cross to which he was nailed and the pillar at which he was scourged. Cassiodorus, when commenting on Psalm LXXXVR, speaks of the crown of thorns among the other relics which are the glory of the earthly Jerusalem. There, he says, we may behold the thorny crown, which was only set upon the head of our Redeemer in order that all the thorns of the world might be gathered together and broke on. When Gregory of Tours in De Gloria Martyri avers that the thorns in the crown still looked green, a freshness which was miraculously renewed each day, he does not much strengthen the historical authenticity of a relic he had not seen, but the breviarius and the itinerary of Antoninus of Piacenza clearly state that the crown of thorns was currently shown in the church on Mount Zion. From these fragments of evidence and others of later date, it is likely that a purported crown of thorns was venerated at Jerusalem from the 5th century for several hundred years. Byzantium Francois de Remy Acutely supposed that the whole crown was not transferred to Byzantium until about 1063. In any case Justinian is stated to have given the thorn to Saint Germain, Bishop of Paris, which was long preserved at Saint Germain des Pierre Acutes, while the Empress Irene, in 798 or 802, sent Charlemagne in several thorns which were deposited by him at Aachen. Eight of these are said to have been there at the consecration of the Basilica of Aachen by Pope Leo III. The presence of the Pope at the consecration is a later legend, but the relics apparently were there. For the subsequent history of several of them can be traced without difficulty. Four were given to Saint Corneille of Compiègne in 877 by Charles the Bald. Hugh the Great, Duke of the Franks, sent one to the Anglo-Saxon King Athelstan in 927 on the occasion of certain marriage negotiations, and it eventually found its way to Malmesbury Abbey. Another was presented to a Spanish princess about 1160, and again another was taken to Andex Abbey in Germany in the year 1200. France in 1238, Baldwin II, the Latin Emperor of Constantinople, anxious to obtain support for his tottering empire, offered the crown of thorns to Louis IX, King of France. It was then in the hands of the Venetians as security for a heavy loan, but it was redeemed and conveyed to Paris where Louis IX built the Saint-Chapelle to receive it. 
The relic stayed there until the French Revolution, when, after finding a home for a while in the Bibliothèque Nationale, the Concordat of 1801 restored it to the church, and it was deposited in the Cathedral of Notre Dame. The relic that the church received is a twisted circlet of Juncus Balticus rushes. The thorns preserved in various other reliquaries are of Zizifus. Spina Christian had apparently been removed from the crown and kept in separate reliquaries since soon after they arrived in France. New reliquaries were provided for the relic, one commissioned by Napoleon, another, in jeweled rock crystal and more suitably gothic, was made to the designs of Eugene Viollet le Duc. In 2001, when the surviving treasures from the Saint Chapel were exhibited at the Louvre, the chaplet was solemnly presented every Friday at Notre Dame. Pope John Paul II translated it personally to the Saint Chapelle during World Youth Day, the Catholic Encyclopedia said. Authorities are agreed that a sort of helmet of thorns must have been plaited by the Roman soldiers, this band of rushes being employed to hold the thorns together. It seems likely according to M. Der M. Eacutelwire that already at the time when the circlet was brought to Paris the 60 or 70 thorns, which seem to have been afterwards distributed by Saint Louis and his successors, had been separated from the band of rushes and were kept in a different reliquary. None of these now remain at Paris. Some small fragments of Russia are also preserved at Arras and at Lyons. With regard to the origin and character of the thorns, both tradition and existing remains suggest that they must have come from the bush botanically known as Zizifus spina Christi, more popularly, the jujube tree. This reaches the height of 15 or 20 feet and is found growing in abundance by the wayside around Jerusalem. The crooked branches of this shrub are armed with thorns growing in pairs a straight spine and a curved one commonly occurring together at each point. The relic preserved in the Capella della Spina at Pisa, as well as that at Trier, which though their early history is doubtful and obscure, are among the largest in size, afford a good illustration of this peculiarity. Third-class relics Not all of the reputed holy thorns are first-class relics, that is, relics of the original crown. M. Der M. Y was able to enumerate more than 700. The statement in one medieval obituary that Peter de Haraverio gave to the Cathedral of Vangas, Unum de spinis quae fuit apposita corona spini nostra redemptoris, indicates that many of the thorns were relics of the third class objects, touched to a relic of the first class, in this case some part of the crown itself. Again, even in comparatively modern times, it is not always easy to trace the history of these objects of devotion, as first-class relics were often divided and any number of authentic third-class relics may exist. Purported Remnants The Holy Thorn Reliquary in the British Museum, containing one thorn, was made for the French Prince Jean, Duc de Berry in the 1390s who is documented as receiving several thorns from Charles V and Vi, his brother and nephews. The Catholic Encyclopedia reported two holy thorns were venerated, the one at St. Michael's Church in Ghent, the other at Stonyhurst College, both professing to be the thorn given by Mary Queen of Scots to Thomas Percy, Earl of Northumberland. The Gazetteer of Relics and Miraculous Images lists the following, following Cruise 1984, Belgium, Parochial Church of Wevelgem, a portion of the Crown of Thorns, Belgium, Ghent, St. Michael's Church, a thorn from the Crown of Thorns, Czech Republic, Prague, St. Vitus Cathedral, a thorn of the crown of thorns, in the cross at the top of crown of St. Wenceslas, part of the Czech crown jewels, France, Notre Dame de Paris, the circlet of rushes of the crown of thorns, displayed the first Friday of each month and all Fridays in Lent, France, St. Chapelle, a portion of the crown of thorns, brought to the site by Louis IX, Germany, Cathedral of Trier, a thorn from the Crown of Thorns, Germany, Cologne, Kolenbach, a thorn from the Crown of Thorns, given by Louis IX, 
to the Dominicans of Lutich and a second thorn from the treasure of St. Columbus Church, Germany, Elchingen, Church of the former Benedictine Abbey Kloster Elchingen, a thorn brought to the church in 1650 50 firsts. Italy, Rome, Santa Croce in Jerusalem A, two thorns from the crown of thorns, Italy, Rome, Santa Prasid, a small portion of the crown of thorns, Italy, Pisa, Spedia Reunity di Santa Chiara, a branch with thorns from the crown of thorns, Italy, Naples, Santa Maria in Corinata, a fragment of the crown of thorns, Italy, Ariano Urpino, Cathedral, two thorns from the crown of thorns, Spain, Oviedo, Cathedral, five thorns from the crown of thorns, Spain, Barcelona, Cathedral, a thorn from the crown of thorns, Spain, Seville, Iglesia de la Annunciation, a thorn from the crown of thorns, United Kingdom, British Museum, Holy Thorn Reliquary, Salting Reliquary, each with a thorn, United Kingdom, Stanbrick Abbey, Worcester, a thorn from the Crown of Thorns, United Kingdom, Stonyhurst College, Lancashire, a thorn from the Crown of Thorns, United States of America, St. Anthony's Chapel, Pittsburgh, a thorn from the Crown of Thorns, Ukraine, Odessa, St. Prophet Elijah Monastery, a fragment of a thorn of the crown of thorns, iconography, the appearance of the crown of thorns in art, notably upon the head of Christ in representations of the crucifixion or the subject Heke Homo arises after the time of St. Louis and the building of the St. Chapelle. The Catholic Encyclopedia reported that some archaeologists had professed to discover a figure of the crown of thorns in the circle which sometimes surrounds the Cairo emblem on early Christian sarcophagi, but the compilers considered that it seemed to be quite as probable that this was only meant for a laurel wreath. The image of the crown of thorns is often used symbolically to contrast with earthly monarchical crowns. In the symbolism of King Charles the Martyr, the executed English King Charles I is depicted putting aside his earthly crown to take up the crown of thorns. As in William Marshall's print take on Basilic, this contrast appears elsewhere in at, for example in Frank Dixie's painting The Two Crowns. The carnations symbolize the Jesus Passion as they represent the crown of thorns. Photo Gallery Reliquary made in 1806, commissioned by Napoleon, preserved at Notre Dame Cathedral. A second reliquary from 1862, designed by Vio Le Duc, preserved at Notre Dame Cathedral. Detail of the 1862 reliquary. The Saint Chapelle, built to house the Passion relics. Mater Dolorosa and bust of Crown of Thorns. William Marshall's print depicting King Charles I taking up the crown of thorns.